Welcome guys for another game bug review. Now unfortunately our website is going through some maintenance issues. Uh, we are trying to get that fixed and back and running uh, as soon as we can. So until then, you're going to have to just watch this over on YouTube which you'll be watching as you've clicked this link, obviously. And um, check out our Facebook page for all our updates. <clears throat> now, I do have the flu, so my voice sounds a bit nasally, but just bear with me. So, today I'm going to be talking about Captain Toad Treasure Tracker for the Nintendo Switch. And by golly, he's back. That little treasure hunting little mushroom man. Or, I don't, is he a mushroom? I mean, they said his head was, it's not even his head, it's a hat. I don't know. Let's just call him a mushroom man, because that's what I've known him as. Anyway, so I played the game originally on the Wii U, which I absolutely loved. So, I was keen to see if there was any real differences uh, with the Switch version. Um, so, I'll get into that uh, going further down the track. But to start off with, let's talk about the, the concept, the, the story, the premise of this game. So, you are Toad, the little treasure hunting spelunker type mushroom man. And basically, Toadette gets captured and you have to go rescue her. The end. Uh, and then there's a little twist in the story once you complete that, which I will try not to spoil. Um... So yeah, it's, it's a very simple and premise, but I mean, who cares? It's all about the gameplay. That's what Nintendo games are for. They're about fun. They're about great mechanics. You know, a story is just there to just sort of give you a reason as to why you're doing it. Which, honestly, I don't care. I, I would do it without a reason anyway. Moving on. So we're talking about graphics here. Now, visually... There is a slight upgrade, uh, obviously, from the Switch version to the Wii U version. So when you're playing docked, it's 1080p as opposed to 720p on the Wii U. Now it is 720p when you're playing in handheld because I'm pretty sure that's the maximum resolution of the actual handheld screen. Um, but when you're playing in handheld, it's so crisp. I mean, the graphics overall, even on the Wii U, looked phenomenal. And to this day, they compare to any PS4 and Xbox One games that I've seen. Everything is so smooth, so well animated. Just, it looks like, honestly, like it looks like a Pixar film. Uh, as you can see in the video that um, I'm showing, it's amazing. And now, you know, YouTube downgrades these video qualities and all this rubbish, but... If you get a chance to actually play the game, you will see just how amazing it really looks. It's vibrant, it's colourful, it's every location so varied from the last. Uh, lots of different detailed environments. Um, you know, little little subtle effects in the animation when Toad gets scared or when he's running or when he's lifting things. Like, it's just really well animated and really well designed. <clears throat> and each level is kind of like a little toy box to turn and look around and tinker with and try to find the way to get to your objective. So speaking of that, let's go into the gameplay section. So the gameplay is not so much a platform because Toad can't actually jump. Poor little Captain Toad, he can't jump. He can just run around. So as I was saying before, every level is kind of like a little toy box. So you can sort of see it from any angle. You can twist it, turn it, zoom in, zoom out. Um, and you can clearly see where your objectives are. And the objectives... Obje uh, I can't even speak today. The objective is to get the star. And there is three gemstones that you can collect. And obviously, if you collect all three, it's more beneficial to you because you unlock uh, levels down the track, blah, 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 blah. So... If you're a completionist, you can go through and try to collect all the treasures. And then after you've been in a level, there might be a hidden treasure um, that you can go back in or a hidden challenge. But yeah, the goal is to get that star. So once you've got the star, you've beat the level. Okay. So obviously it's not that easy. So the star will be hidden somewhere in the world um, or it might be on a platform that you can't get to. And your goal is to maneuver around this little toy box world to turn it and find the right angles to see where you can sort of find a little hidden path or a switch that you can change. Just basically, 
any which way that you can to manipulate the world so that you can get to that star. And it sounds simple, um, but it can get challenging. And there, you know, there it's not challenging in the way that you're just going to be sitting there bashing your head going, how do I do this? Um, but it definitely gets you thinking, especially when you want to get some of those uh, gems that aren't so easy to get to. And um, sometimes you might make a mistake which stops you from actually reaching that goal. So when that happens, you basically have to restart if you want that extra gem. Um, or you can just complete the level and move on. But I don't like doing that. I have to be a completion. I have to go back and complete every little thing. Um, so yeah, everything runs smoothly. No hiccups that I noticed. Um, you know, you can use touchscreen controls. You use the normal buttons. Um, you know, you might have to click on it, like press onto an object. So, uh, there's many different ways to play this game. And, um, so yeah, overall the gameplay is very tight, very responsive, and it's just really fun to play, especially in handheld mode, just sitting back, taking your time, um, you know, relaxing and just giving a, a level a go. Very, uh, quick pick up and play, I would say, you know, there's no... It's not like a big overarching story. Everything is segmented into levels. So it's it's great if you're on a train, you just want to get through a little level um, or maybe go back and, you know, get something that you, you missed on the first time around. It's always great. So moving on to the sound. Now, if you've ever played any sort of Mario Universe game, you kind of know what music to expect. It's very... Uh, what's the word? Very chirpy, very um, upbeat, very, very kid friendly. I mean, you know, for example, Disney's got their sort of sound. The Mario universe has their sort of sound as well. And, um, you know, people might say it's childlike, but it, it's, I guess it makes you feel like that, that little, little sense of wonder and adventure when you hear that music. And it's very catchy as well. It'll get stuck in your head. Um, so great all around. It's it's very well produced. And um, Toad's just adorable. And I love all the little noises he makes. Um, you might love it. You might hate it. It could be like a case of the minions. Um, but yeah, I, I think the sound department, Nintendo nails every single time. Now, on to the awesomeness section. Now, I think the main thing that I would say uh, this game does well is the amount of level variety. And also the fact that it's so different to anything I've ever played before. It's like as if you if you took uh, an RPG, like a tactics game, like for example, Final Fantasy Tactic, and you took that map and then you put an, uh, like a sort of puzzle platformer. And I keep saying the word platformer, but there's no platforming being done. But that style of, you know, just a third person uh, view and uh, kind of top down... Um, look to it but yeah it's it's a mix of uh, of a couple of different genres in terms of gameplay um and it's it's very unique in that way so i i really appreciate that nintendo you know took a level from super mario 3d world and made a whole game out of it and i guess being able to play it portably you know as i said before is just one of those benefits of the switch but this game just really fits for it and there's just so much amount of content. There's so many levels. There's always, uh, once you complete a level, a hidden challenge. So you can go back and do it again to get that. Just for those completionists in you. And um, it's just really fun. Like, it's a really fun game. Um, and it's paced really well. Like, I didn't feel like I binged through it, you know, and just got to the completion and like really quickly um i sort of did a few levels put it down come back to a few more levels so i feel like the pacing's really good for it it's not a binge game i would say um and i like the addition for the switch they've made four levels um specifically for the switch version which focuses on the super mario odyssey worlds um so there's something new for those switch players you can also use the toad amiibo which i think grants uh invulnerability um so yeah there's and i don't know what the other amiibos uh do i haven't actually tested them out but um you know, it's just a great overall package. So, you know, my, my lasting words is if you don't own this game and you own a Switch, definitely get this game. I mean, if you don't like puzzle games at all, then maybe not. You know, if you're just into first person shooters and that, it's not for you. 
But if you're into any sort of Mario or Yoshi or any of those Kirby, any of those sort of uh, big Nintendo franchises, I guarantee that you will like this game. And the quality from the visuals to the sound design, it's just all fantastic. I'm going to go concept, you know, let's give it a, a, a four out of five. I mean, it, it, it's hard to put a it's hard to put a score on the on the the story and the concept of these games because there's not really much to them in terms of story, but it does what it does well. Um, graphics, I'm going to give it a five out of five because it's friggin' fantastic looking. Um, in terms of gameplay, uh, I'd probably give it a four point five. There's a little tiny bit of frustrations here and there with trying to move the camera around, um, but other than that, I think it's a superb game. Um, sound design, five out of five. I love everything Nintendo does with their, um, audio design. Um, awesomeness, I'm going to give it a four out of five because there were some levels that you could unlock if you had Super Mario 3D World on the Wii U, which they've taken out. I would have liked if they just kept those and added the new ones. Um, but you know, overall this game is fantastic. So overall I'd probably give it like a 4.5 out of five because it's, it's, it's not like a complete masterpiece, but it's really, really, really close and really damn good. So if you haven't got this game, guys, check out this video. Watch. Hopefully you've listened and watched all the way through and uh, give it a chance. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.